All right, here we go. It is my absolute honor to welcome the legendary Large Professor. Yes, sir, in the building. One of the greatest hip hop producers of all time. Appreciate it. And one of the main architects of arguably the best hip hop album of all time, Nas is Illmatic. You know, as well as production credit from fucking everybody. <laughs> Eric Bean Rock Hill. All the luminaries, yeah. All the Tribe Lumen. Called Quest to Big L to yeah. Woo. Yeah. Hey man, I'm I'm absolutely honored for you to come here today. Appreciate it, Vlad. Word up. We good. Good for you. Huge life. fan. No doubt. Huge fan. So it's your first time here. Let's go ahead and start in the very beginning. You grew up uh well you were born in Harlem, right, but you were raised in Queens. Yeah, raised in Queens from day one, like but just to haul them, like, you know what I'm saying? They got me out of there, boom, straight to Flushing. Yeah, Flushing, Queens. Flushing, you know? Queens. Yeah. Okay. So you're growing growing up in Flushing, and, I mean, you actually remember when there was no hip-hop. Well, yes. well, sort yes. of. Yes. Sort no, of. No, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, depending on the individual, how they, you know, they, how cognizant they was at whatever time. Now, but I was cognizant on the sound, so I remember when there was no hip hop, definitely. Right, I mean, because hip hop was technically born in 73, but yeah. but that was still a very, it was just a Bronx thing. Yeah. There's nothing on the radio, and it was a very long time before. Yeah. It, it Maybe really, like a break breakbeat era, like kind of, yeah. and the rapping was different. So, yeah. Okay. Do you remember the first hip hop record you heard? Yeah, the first uh, hip hop record that I loved, the first one I bought was Spoonie G, uh, Spoon and Rap. The first one that I really truly, I mean, I guess that's the one that I love, but the one that I really like, like, oh wow, this is really going to be a thing, was Freedom by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think I may have had that record too. Yeah, yeah. those horns is just like, and just to hear them keep repeating those horns was like, man, eh, 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 eh. I'm like, oh, nah, this is crazy. Yeah, Melly Mel is one of these artists that people don't seem to mention in their top list, but. I mean, but you know, everyone's not a historian, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So Mel is not going, you know, they're just going to go with whoever the current person is if they're not a historian. So Yeah, but as, as someone who really knows, oh, you have to put Melly Mel somewhere, yeah, somewhere. from the, 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 the subject matter to yeah. the strength of the delivery yeah. to the uniqueness. Yeah. It's funny because it's a, a running joke with me and Mel, like every time I see him. Uh, I, I like the pump it up joint that he did, like with the Grandmaster. So uh, one of the lines was like, "And the whole universe knew the king was me." Mm -hmm. And so every time I see him, that's how I greet him. So you know, Mel, that's that's my man. I know his lyrics, like so definitely. So when did you go from just being a hip hop fan, like the rest of us, to saying, "Hey, I think I may want to start actually creating some of this stuff." Nah, I I, um, I I just think I was always on some culture, like always trying my hand at whatever it was. You know, I had a, a much older sister, so, you know, when Breaking came out, when all of that, it was always like, you know, yo, get them, like, do, yo, do what I, yo, you know, that kind of thing. So it was always like, you know, I had to break or whatever it was, you know, and, and it was just always a part of life, like playing the records in the crib and everything like that. It was just, you know, took different forms. Okay, so you're a break dancer also. Yo, break dancer, yeah. graffiti, all of that. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. You yeah. know, you try your hand at all of that. I don't know if it was a flushing thing, like we was right down the block from the Globe and all that triathlon, kind of, you know, Olympiad kind of stuff. So we was like really, you know, dudes that really try to, you know, do do it to the best of our ability, super best. Okay, and did you ever have any music lessons at all? Or did I you mean, yo, I, I had hip hop music lessons, you right? Know but what but, I'm but no, no, uh, you know, you never played piano or drums or. Nah, I think my music lessons came from my man Grandmaster Vic out there in um in Southside because he blent records so good that it sounded like they were made for each other. Like he'd take the acapella and then he would put like he would put and it would be like, damn, that just sound like it, it was made like that, and so. That's kind of like my, those were like my piano lessons. It was like, all right, so yo, you could pitch the record certain ways where they'll lock in, and then, you know, with sampler, you know, technology, you can stretch and bring, you know, that type of stuff. So did you start out DJing first? Uh, as far as audio, no, no, no. I, I started around, like, once I heard uh, Slick Rick and Dougie Fresh, uh, the show, the show, I went right and rode around. Like, uh -huh. I, that was like the... 
uh, you know, before that, I was a fan. I was like, yo, I just listened to him. But when I, for some reason, when I heard Slick Rick and Dougie first the show, I was like, yo, nah, like, because I, you know, just, you know. Uh, it's a timeless record. Yo, I mean, that and. You can throw it on right now. <laughs> I were, and I don't know what, you know, like, when I heard it, it was like, yo, this is the type of rap that I'm, you know, it was like that showmanship. It was like, yo, six minutes, like, yo, we about to throw the ballys on it. You know, I was like. Yeah, that's that shit. That's 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 that shit. So, yeah. Yeah. Didn't Teddy Riley produce that? He yeah, he definitely was in on the. That, that was one of the one yeah. of the early Teddy Riley in on the boys productions absolutely. who later yeah. went on to absolutely be a Word. mega producer. Yeah, but yeah, he had that hip hop root Word. roots. Um, okay, so you heard the show and you start writing rhymes. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah. and I guess your original name was Paul Juice. Yeah, Professor Paul Juice star sometimes like it was because i was such a like mr magic and molly Mar. so like the juice it's it's a funny thing like i had called up to mr magic one time and i was like yo gave a shout out he was like yo what's your name young bro i said yo professor paul juice and then when he said the shout out he said he was like yo it's professor paul juice of course no relation to me so I'm like, ah, Magic, you killing me right now, man. I'm wildly related to you. You don't know it. You know what I'm saying? So it was crazy. So, but nah, that's, yeah, nah, I was on um, Professor Paul Juice. Well, okay. And I guess um, the Nation of Islam was, was real big during that time. Yeah. Were, were you actually part of that or not? Absolutely, man. You were. You're part yeah, of the NOI. Yeah, yeah. I, I, nah, not Nation of Islam, but, you know, like, well, I, you know, I, we, we, you know, 5% nation, like, yeah. you know, 7 so um, I, I used to knowledge lessons. I, I would knowledge lessons. My attribute was Prince Infinite Love a lot, and uh, I really took all of the good out of that because it was finally like a a culture that was like just for black people that you know it was like we were speaking and we had our language. You know, we were speaking through the alphabet and through math and stuff like that. And it was like, nah, this is our language. And then you know, I took to that. And then just wild stuff. You know, the gods be yelling sometimes. So it's just like. All right, cool. I got what I got from that. You know what I'm saying? Let me travel on in life and just, you know, religions and all of that. Yeah. Right. And the large professor name came from like the 5%? Well, I, I think so because it was, um, you know, it was with that love, you know, like that love for, that we were starting to get, you know, it was like, yo, that love for ourselves grew. So it was like, yo, Supreme, what up? You know what I'm saying? Peace, yo. Uh, you know, my man's name was wonderful. So I was no longer knowledge and lessons, but I was still in that mode. So, you know, and then now you becoming boisterous in the world and you just talking that shit, so it's like lost professor kind of shit. Yeah. And that stuck? No doubt. Nah, right. nah, nah, I mean, I, I rolled with it, you know what I'm saying? Nobody in the el else in the world, I mean, the people, they roll with me, but it's like, lost professor, like, mm -hmm. I was looking for lost professor, who's, where's this guy, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, mm -hmm. let me get on them turntables, let me get on that mic or that drum machine, I'll show you who's who or what's what. And, you know, so that's what I roll with. But, um, you know, it's, it, we still growing, man. My pops always told me, he was like, man, you made a big name for self, for yourself, man. You got uh -huh. some, you know, so I was like, nah, I, I live up. I live up. It ain't nothing. Or, okay. So did the, did the production start first or did Main Source first come together? Nah, okay. So now, and, you know, that's where the DJing came in because I, you know, I was trying my hand out of little rhymes, but then, like, you know, just to keep me out of trouble, like I group home shit and all of that. Then I get home and like my mom's, I'm like, yo, these turntables, my man was getting ready to move. He was like, I'm done with this hip hop shit, fuck this shit, boom. And then, you know, I wound up with this great deal on these turntables, which I always played records and always scanned records in life. So that when that started, it was wildfire because now, now that's where the beats and all of that, you know, stem from DJing. So you got these two turntables, and you yeah. start kind of, yeah, I mean, basically up. making pause tapes in a way. Ultimate breaks and beats. Ultimate breaks and beats. Mr. Walt was on the Ave, on Jamaica Ave, a music factory. Uh, Eric B and Rakim paid in full. Yo, Mr. Walt, what's that? What's the drum beat? You know, because we knew they were the drum beats for the ultimate breaks and beats. Yo, it's this one right here. Take it home. Get a second copy. Boom. Cut it up. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you just it start being. You know, you a DJ, so yeah. you know. Get that hunger, you like more, more, yo, know, more records, you know. So it just was wildfire from there. So at what point did did Main Source come together? Main Source came together along that same time where it was like, 
we in school, you know, and, and you know, in the high school time of life, man, you know, your brain is like fully like on some sponge absorption shit. So it's like all of that was happening at the same time. And we had this little DJ club we was doing and it was like five DJs and it was like, all right, yo, who's going to rhyme? So I was like, nah, I could rhyme too. And then boom, that's how I wound up being like the front man. But it, it really started as like four and five DJs. We was all cutting off. Right, because I always wondered about that. It's like main source was like kind of like three DJs. And, and, and one yeah, of them being a rapper. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely, you definitely. Know, you, yeah, so sure. I, I, you've never really seen a hip hop group like that. It'd be like two rappers and a DJ, yeah, DJ like Tribe Called Quest, yeah, or exactly. you know, yeah. you know, or, or Salt and Pepper, yeah, Salt and Pepper, yeah, or definitely. or it would be Eric B and Rakim, a rapper Q-U, and a DJ. Q-U, Q-U, yeah. Q-U, I try so very yeah. Yeah. But Q-U. but you guys are actually three DJs, and one of one of the DJs is a rapper. That's main source. Is that, is that a way to describe it? You said it, man. That's main source. That's main source. Yeah. So who was actually handling, handling the production? Was it all you or were they doing production? No, no, no. It was a collection. It was a collective. Um, And the thing that we, it was crazy at that time, we had kind of like an advantage because we were working with a Synclavia at that time. And it was earlier times and sync methods and stuff like that. So... We had the crazy jump, like, because my man Tony A, he was, uh, Tony P, he was just doing, yo, you know, all that technical talk, man. So mm-hmm. it was really some main source kind of, like, experiment project kind of thing. Well, okay. And you guys got to deal with Wild Pitch. Yeah, Wild Pitch. Like, just through uh, DJ Premier. He's the one that told him, like, yo, check these guys out. Right. And Wild Pitch kind of had a, not that great of a reputation. Yeah. What was that line? You don't want to make a pitch, pitch that's, that's wild. wild. Yeah, nah, Who, no who said that? Diamond D. Diamond D, right. Diamond D, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> he had earlier dealings with them, and he didn't particularly <laughs> care for how it went down, and he said that. Okay. Nah, but um, actually, man, Stu Fine, who was the owner of Wild Pitch, had a great ear because Gangstar, UMCs, later Ultra Magnetic MCs, mm-hmm. Main Source, Chill Rob G, mm-hmm. you know, Yo, entice, law finesse. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that I always big up Stu Fine. You know what I'm saying? And as you, you know, he knew the industry. We didn't know the industry, so you know he was like, guys, get a job. <laughs> like, yo, we making records and shit. He was like, yo, you could just go get a job. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what the fuck you mean? We we get ready to be stars. You know what I'm saying? But it's like he knew the reality of it. Like, yo, nah, yo, get a couple of little avenues going and shit, and then boom. But you know. Well, a piece of Stu, Stu Fine and Wild. I, I never, you know, I did bellyache about, yo, industry and all of that shit. But after a while, you know what I'm saying? It was like, yo, nah, I see what you're saying, Stu. Like, yo, shit is, yeah. Okay. So the Paul C thing, does that come before or after you drop the album? That is before the album. Like, Paul okay. kind of prepped us, like, with the SB1200, the drum machine and all of that kind of stuff. Like, he's the one... Like in the middle of the album cover of the Breaking Atoms, like he's like right there because he's the one that gave us the tool, which the SB twelve hundred at that time was like the most coveted tool to for dudes to work with, and he kind of brushed us on that when it was even impossible to get in the room with that kind of equipment. So, you know, we took those tools and just was able to go from there. Yeah, the SB twelve hundred that was the original hip hop. Yeah, sampler. Creation machine. Sampler drum machine. Sampler yeah. drum machine. Yeah. The MPC-60 kind of replaced it later on, I feel, yeah, to a certain degree. Definitely. But before the MPC-60, yeah. there the was SB-1200. The, the SB-1200. And the SB-12 had a, like a very distinctive sound. Yeah, that grit. It was yeah. the mono, it was the mono, it was the 12-bit. 12 12-bit, 12 yeah, right. Yeah, and all of that, yeah. Yeah, it was a very, very dope machine. Definitely. And if you knew how to use it, you were a, yeah. a wizard. Yeah, especially, shit. yeah, like, with the sound yeah. shaping on there and all of that. Like, all right, cool. Yeah. Like, I think Premier still uses the SB-1200. Last I checked. I, Premier, he always says he used the SB. I, I'm like, yo, you MP every time I see yeah. Okay. And why the name Main Source? Main Source, K-Cut, my DJ, he came up with that name. Like, we were in the lawyer's office, and he was just like, yo, so guys, what's going to be the name? And he was like, Main Source. I was like, nah, I rock with that word. You know, so, yeah, that was Main Source. That's, that's K-Cut. 